Character design is a never-ending ocean of creations and ideas. We can do what we want and execute it how we want to craft a character that's all our own. But in this never-ending ocean of ideas, there's sometimes a strong belief that meticulous detail and complexity is the key to creating captivating character designs. Now, this may hold true for some mediums like mobile and console games, but what if I told you that it's actually simplicity, which is the secret to creating truly remarkable characters in manga? Well, I think it is, and I bet by the end of this 10 minute video, you'll also see why keeping your character design simple is actually the first step to making them 10 times better. In a design world sometimes saturated with intricate and elaborate character designs, simplicity holds a whole lot of power. By powering down unnecessary details and focusing on the core essence of your characters, you allow their true personality and unique qualities to shine through. Now, simple doesn't mean plain or uninspired, because I know you're thinking about all of those cool characters you know that have intricate designs. It means distilling your characters down to their most essential elements and conveying them with some kind of finesse and precision. When designing characters for manga, the first step is to consider their fundamental traits and their purpose to your overall story. What are the key attributes that define them? What emotions and experiences do they embody? Once you have a clear idea of this, shoot for simplicity in their physical appearance in the first stage of your design, and emphasize what's essential to convey that character's individual identity. Fifi, you may ask. Why on earth would I want to create a simple character design? Shouldn't they be memorable? How is simple memorable at all? Why, yes, my friend, we do want them to be memorable. But remember the most important thing here. We're creating a manga. And what does that mean? It means we'll be drawing the same character in hundreds of different ways over and over again until you never want to see their faces again, even though hopefully you do. I don't know about you, but I certainly don't want to be stuck drawing the same hyper-detailed embroidery on one piece of a character's clothing just to get some temporary character design cool points. I mean, we have to be practical, right? Unless, of course, that embroidery has some kind of plot significance. But what I'm truly saying is that simplicity in this sense means that we focus on conveying a character's personality and roll through their appearance not necessarily through the intricacy of their attire. One major example of this is the main cast of Jujutsu Kaisen. The general attire of the main protagonists is actually quite simple, but each of them has something visually striking, whether it's hair color, eyes, an accessory, or maybe even a scar. This almost forces you to deeply characterize the character as a designer or construct a compelling persona ensuring that that strong personality that you create in the very first stage of design process really shines through. As you can see in the case of Gojo, he's incredibly popular despite his relatively straightforward design. So how exactly is that achieved? How do you capture the simplistic yet striking character design magic that Gojo's design seems to have mastered? Let's find out. And if you're enjoying this character design breakdown, I've got plenty more coming up on the channel. So subscribe to the channel if you're loving it. Your support really does mean the world to me. Okay, now that we understand the power of simplicity, let's explore how to make your manga characters truly unforgettable like Gojo, but all our own. While simplicity forms the foundation, it's the strategic use of striking elements that elevates a character from plain old boring to iconic. Striking elements, that's what we're gonna call them. Details on a character that are unmistakably and uniquely them. One effective way to create striking elements is through the character's hairstyle. We can experiment with unique and eye-catching hairstyles that not only complement their personality, but also visually differentiate them from other characters. Think of your character's silhouette. What kind of shapes can you create with their hair that form an unmistakable silhouette? And even beyond shapes, what colors can you give your character's hair that really make their appearance stand out? Accessories can also play a significant role in creating striking elements. A bold accessory like a signature hat or a symbolic piece of jewelry can become a pivotal part of a character's identity. These carefully chosen details not only add visual interest, but they also help reinforce the character's personality traits or story background. When utilized thoughtfully, Accessories become powerful visual cues that really need no explanation at all. Lastly, physical traits are another exceptional type of striking element. You can consider incorporating distinct facial features into your character design, like captivating eyes in the case of Gojo, unique scar, or an unconventional body shape. All of these features become iconic identifiers, immediately associating the readers with the character's image and personality. So if you utilize striking elements, you make sure that the 
the characters that you create actually stand out. And at that point, you can put any outfit you want on them, and yet they still retain a pivotal persona that actually makes them memorable. And that leaves us with Kenzie. Kenzie Akimoto, my character from Yo Treehouse. Let's go through her design and see if I can practice what I preach. So here you can see that Kinsey kind of has a sailor huku kind of dress, and she's got like a neck scarf, knee socks, all of this kind of youthful appearancey thing, but there's nothing particularly stand out about her clothing. I did try to make her design favor sort of a Robin Hood look, especially in the seafoam green color of her knee socks and her scarf. The reason being is that Kinsey is quite literally sort of like Robin Hood in my story, and so my hope is that the reader can kind of see some semblance of that in her clothing, mixed with a little bit of a modern Sailor Huku design. But the striking feature in Kinsey's design is actually her eyes. Typically in a character with this sort of blonde hair, you may expect that they'd have blue eyes some form of blue or green eyes. I decided to give Kinsey red eyes, and not only that, but I particularly wanted her face to kind of have this creepy doll-like look. So I wanted to give her extremely long lashes on the top and bottom of her eyes. To me, this kind of goes against what you may expect a character like this to look like, and I'm hoping that that aspect of her design somewhat subverts expectations when you see her character. But the real magic of Kinsey's character is in her personality. Being from an ordained society, she's from a family of aristocrats and part of the upper echelons of the world, she takes a very unconventional approach in her lifestyle. She wants to take everything that her family has and everything that these aristocrats have and basically give it to the have-nots of her country, Glory Peak. And this is where the Robin Hood aspect comes in. So as a result, Kinsey is a little bit aloof. She's head first. She doesn't think about anything. She's very aggressive, yet fun and youthful. Just every irresponsible thing you could think a 16-year-old could be. No offense to any of my wonderful 16-year-old audience here. So I really want that aspect of Kinsey to shine through and I don't want to have to rely on clothing to portray that side of her. In fact, now that I'm thinking about it, there's actually even an interesting dichotomy between her personality and her clothing. She's got the Sailor Huku outfit, which a lot of times represents a youthful innocence, but her personality is everything but. So this is some of the fun things that you can play around with with character designs and personalities, and it's precisely why when you really focus on that inner side of the character and then let the outside be informed by that inner side, you can create a really cool and unique design. This is why simplicity in the outward appearance can be so pivotal and so important. Well, that's all I have for you today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little something about what I think is the most important step in character design, which is keeping it simple in the early stages. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for plenty more videos like this. I probably won't ever stop, so they'll keep coming as long as you keep enjoying them. I'm Fifi Mangaka, and I'm working on my own manga named Yield Treehouse. If you'd like to stick around for the ride, I'd love to have you. I'll see you next time. Bye.